Okay, we're at lesson 5.2 and we're going to be using intercepts um, to graph equations and we've actually been doing this in the last few pages. So this is just an extension of uh, everything that we've been doing. And so in this explore section, we are given a context where we're told that miners are exploring 90 feet underground and they ascend in an elevator. So from 90 feet underground, they're ascending. So they're going up at a constant rate over a period of three minutes until they reach the surface. And in the coordinate grid, the horizontal axis rep uh, represents the time in minutes from when the miners start ascending and the vertical axis. So, give, so let's explain that. So the horizontal, so zero, one, two, three, and four are the time in minutes that is passing by. And in terms of the y-axis here, that shows the elevation, so at this point, they're at, so let me zoom in here, they're at 90 uh, feet, 80 feet, 70 feet, so on and so forth until they get to zero feet. All right, so that's basically what's happening here. Okay, so zooming back out there. Um, so what, rep so in choice, in part A, we're asked what point represents the miner's elevation at the beginning of the ascent? Well, we're told in the context that they're starting 90 feet below the surface, so uh, at, at minute zero, right, they're at negative 90 feet. Does that make sense? Since they haven't gone anywhere, so they're starting at negative 90 feet. Okay, what point represents the miner's elevation at the end of the ascent? Well, we're told, we're told that it takes three minutes to get up to the surface, and at the surface, they're at zero feet underground, because it's the surface. C, we're going to connect the points with the line segment so let's go ahead and do that so from here to here let's connect that line and maybe make it a little bit longer and then move it over uh, using the magic of the the iPad here oops we'll draw arrows on either side to show that the line goes on forever so there's our line so what is the point where the graph crosses the X, the y axis and the x axis well the y axis is cross right here at 0 comma -90 and it crosses the x-axis here at 3 comma 0. Okay, and that's basically what we're doing. We're looking for the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis and we're looking for the x-intercept. Okay, so on the next page I'm going to let you read um, the nice explain part here, um, but I'm going to jump ahead for the sake of um, <coughs> just efficiency in making this video. Uh, you might want to pause and just read that explain part, but in any case, what you should learn from that explain part is how to find the x and the y-intercept. And and there's a there's a little bit of a trick to it. If you want to find the x-intercept, we're going to make y equals zero. And if we want to find the y-intercept, we're going to make x equals zero. Okay, so that's just the shortcut basically. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so that we're asked to find the x-intercept. So what that means is I'm going to make y equals 0. So in this particular function here, I'm going to make y equals 0 to find the x-intercept. And again, making uh, any variable 0 is nice because it just kind of eliminates that for us. Uh, 4x equals 28. Divide both sides by the coefficient of 4. And we should get x equals seven. So the coordinate of the x-intercept is going to be seven comma zero. And the coordinate of the y-intercept, we're going to plug zero and four x. Four times zero minus seven y equals twenty-eight. And go ahead and solve for y. That will go away. Negative seven y equals twenty-eight. Divide both sides by negative seven. We should get y equals negative four. And so the point, uh, the coordinate of that y-intercept, that is, is going to be 0, comma, negative 4. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing two more times. So here we have negative 6y minus 8x equals 24. They want the x-intercept, so we're going to make y equal to 0, minus 8x equals 24. Um, that is the great disinf mathematical disinfectant there. We have negative 8x equals 24. Divide both sides by negative 8. 
and um, that's going to eliminate that and we should get x equals 24 divided by negative 8 negative 3 and so the coordinates are going to be negative 3 comma 0 for the x-intercept let's find the coordinates of the y-intercept which means we're going to make x equals 0 6y minus 8 times 0 equals 24 that makes that go away we have negative 6y equals 24 divide both sides by the coefficient of negative 6 and I'm running out of room here so y equals what is that negative 4 since 24 divided by negative 6 equals uh, negative 4 and so the coordinates gonna be 0 comma negative 4 for that one and lastly in question number 3 a lot of people will take a look at that fraction and freak out but um, the rules are still the same so let's go ahead and find the x-intercept, which means we're going to make y equal to 0. So 1 third x minus 4 times 0 equals 12. That makes that y, that 4 times y go away. 4 times 0 is 0. So we have 1 third x equals 12. In order for us to eliminate that fraction, all we have to do is multiply by the reciprocal, which in layman's terms, we just flip over that fraction there. The reason we do that is because um, it makes everything turn into 1, so 1x. And then 12 <coughs> times 3 over 1 is just, if we multiply the, the numerators together, 12 times 3 is 36, 1 times 1 is 1. Um, and we don't really need to write the 1 in the denominator, so x equals 36. So your first point here is 36 comma 0. Let's find the coordinate of the y-intercept, so we're going to make x equals 0. 1 third times 0 minus 4y equals 12. And for those of you fraction haters, uh, this should make you excited. That will just get rid of that fraction altogether. We have negative 4y equals 12. Divide both sides by the coefficient of negative 4. We should get y equals negative 3. And so the ordered pair in this case is going to be 0, negative 3.